Hello. Welcome to the calibration section of this build video. Um, what you're going to need to calibrate the 3340 VCO, of which I've already taken the panel off, ready to go, is a tuner, that's handy, a 1 volt proactive uh, CV source, I've got this Korg SQ1 here, and a multimeter set to your voltage setting. First of all, it's probably good practice to just have this plugged in for about 10 minutes warming up um, because all of the tuning stuff is temperature sensitive. So let's just get it to its nominal operating temperature. First adjustment we're going to make is just to the 10 volt trimmer, which is here and just under the label 10 volt probe, which is where we're going to put our multimeter probe, funnily enough. Uh, so what we've got is your probes from the multimeter, you're going to connect the ground to outside of one of these jacks, that's where you can find the ground the easiest. It's good if you have one of these crocodile clips, makes your life a bit easier. Don't be confused by the colour of my cables, it's just because the other ones have broken. So I'm using a red one for ground and I'm using a black one for the positive, but just so you're not confused. Uh, I've got the voltage set to 20 volts here because we're going to be looking for 10 volts so you need to have it in that right range. I'm going to put the probe on that 10 volt point. We're at 9.8 already, it's pretty close. So what you're going to do, hold that on there and then with the screwdriver that was provided with the kit, just insert that into there and adjust it clockwise go up, anti-clockwise will go down. Let's see, get it as close to 10 as we can. 9, 9.5, 9.6, 9.7, 9.8, 9.9, 9, 10. There you go, it's pretty stable there on 10, perfect. And that's it. In case you're interested in what that does, it just sets the voltage at this point in the circuit, which feeds through to the top of this resistor ladder here, the voltage divider that gets tapped off at certain points and goes to the controls like the octave switch, the frequency pot, and also the AF uh, LF switch. These are all the resistors that we matched earlier because they're the ones that are important for pitch. This full schematic is available through the links in the product page and I've set it out in quite a way so that you can pick little bits out and uh, implement them in your own designs. Make sure that the LF AF switch is set into the right side AF position. Then set the octave switch all the way anti-clockwise to the lowest octave. So the aim with the scale control is to make sure that when you send in a voltage to the CV input, that corresponds with the correct pitch that the oscillator is sending out. So because we're scaling it to one volt per octave control, if you send in one volt, the pitch should go up one octave. So that's what we're going to test now. And if the pitch goes too far sharp, then you know that you've got to decrease the distance between the notes. And if it goes too flat, you know you've got to increase the distance between the notes. And that's what the scale control does. And just so you can get an intuitive sense of what the scale trim actually does, I'm going to switch between the uh, naught and one volt octaves and you'll hear what it does as it slowly brings it closer into tune and one octave exactly apart. So there you can hear the interval between them is way too flat so I'm going to turn it clockwise and we're going to increase the interval between that octave So you're pretty much exactly on the octave there. I should say with these tuners they can make things look a lot worse than they really are and the ultimate test really is just listening to it see if it sounds fine. If you don't have a guitar tuner like this uh, you can just use a free phone app. So here we're sending in naught volts and it's pretty much on C there. Easier if you can tune it exactly to the middle position, you can use the frequency pot for that. So now we're going to send in one volt and it should be a C. 
up just one octave higher. It's a C sharp, it's uh, the little dot there means it's sharp. Um, so that means that I need to turn the scale trim anti-clockwise to decrease the distance between the notes. So let's do that and we should see the pitch go down to a C. There we go. Now you'd think it's done, but the scale trim actually then will cause the fundamental note to move. So if we send in naught volts now, it's B. So you're going to have to repeat that process until eventually it narrows in, hones in on the correct setting. So now I've narrowed down on it a bit more and I'm switching between the octaves here and you can see that it's within the range of a C note but uh, moving up and down that much. So let's make decrease the distance a bit more and then test it. Oh, getting closer. Okay. So now, if I switch between 0 volts and 1 volt, it's not moving on the tuner, which means that they're exactly an octave apart, which is good. So now that we're pretty close with the octave interval between 0 and 1 volts, let's set it between 0 and 2 volts and see if we can get a bit more of an accurate measurement of it, just because the intervals are further apart. Very close. We can have a listen to that, just to make sure. So now we've set our scale trimmer, what we can do is go back to the 10 volt trimmer that we did earlier and do the final setting on that. This is to compensate for the uh, slight imperfections in our matched resistors. Um, I'll show you why we need to trim that very slightly to compensate for those because the match resistors are used by the octave switch here and if we switch between the octaves they should all be the same note. An F here, this is fully uh, counterclockwise here and if I turn it up, one octave up, we're going a bit sharp. Another octave up, yep sharper again and another octave up, yep even sharper. So we need to compensate for that. So what we're going to do is just like we did with the scale trim, because it's a bit sharp as we go up the octaves, that means we need to decrease the interval between those notes, which means we need to turn the 10 volt trim down counterclockwise. So let's do that. So starting on the F here, all the way the octave switch all the way to the left and we're going to go all the way to the right and going to bring that down and back again and just like the scale trimmer it's moved the original note so we need to keep on doing that and just chase it and there we go so I've got it set now so that uh, if you switch the octave, it stays on the same note. And that's averaged out the real world imperfections in the resistors that we've used. Now we're going to work on the high frequency trim part here, uh, which works exactly the same as the scale part, except that it hones in on the very highest frequencies, gives them a little bit of help to stay in tune. What I've done is that I've set the octave switch to its highest position, and I'm just sending in a voltage from my controller here, and I'm just gonna set it so that it's about at the limits of what's reasonable for audio use. So let's see. I mean, we're not gonna use a note higher than that in a musical context, so let's go with that. And then what I'm gonna do is just as the way we did before, I'm gonna use the octave switch to switch between octaves and use this high frequency trim part to make sure that they're all in tune with each other. As I switch between the octaves, it stays the same note, F sharp, F sharp, so now you know it's in tune. So now we're going to set the lowest note 
when it's in audio frequency mode. Um, and so to do that, you want to unplug your CV controller, make sure it's in audio frequency mode, put the frequency pot to the bottom, put the octave switch to the bottom, and just inside this left hand CV pot is your master tune trim pot and I'd advise tuning the lowest note to a C just because that's standard to a lot of uh, MIDI controllers and things um, so here we go decrease it down from a D sharp into a D to a C sharp and to a C there you go you've got a full octaves range on this master trim pot so you can set it to any note that you want for the fundamental when there's no cv input now with everything else set correctly we're going to adjust this little frequency center trim pot here uh, don't need anything else plugged in except listening to the output of one of the waveforms this green frequency pot that should have a full range of two octaves. Let's listen to that. Down. Two octaves. Now, in the middle position, you want it to be exactly in between those two octaves, one octave up from the leftmost position, one octave down from the rightmost position. Let's have a listen. It's pretty close, but on some of them, it's not close at all. <laughs> so. It's just to do with the manufacturing tolerance of these pots here. If you're familiar with how voltage dividers work, well, you need exactly half the resistance on one side of the wiper inside this pot and half on the other. This means that the difference between the left leg here and the right leg here is split exactly in half and sent out the middle leg. Now what I've done is hooked it up to a tuner here. We're looking at the leftmost position on this pot here and that's coming out as a C turn it up and it's a C two octaves up now if you go to the middle position it is not quite a C and that's just to do with the manufacturing tolerance again um, so use this little single turn trimmer here to compensate for that and if it's too flat you turn it to the right and there you go so now the middle position is a C, all the way to the left is a C, all the way to the right is a C. Lovely. Let's give it a little test and see how it sounds. You can put the panel back on and put the knobs on and then you're good to go. Enjoy the module. Thank you very much for getting one. Um, if you want to check out some of the other stuff on the channel, I make fun videos about uh, obsolete <laughs> tech and the projects that I'm trying to do. And if you want to support those projects, just get more modules like this out, um, you can subscribe on Patreon. Thanks very much. See you later.